Hi, Cecile Nehemia, Sacred Erotic Love Mentor, Poet, and Author. You're tuned into the Collaboration Ascension Healing Series. I recently added healing because uh, I think it's so important at this time. And I have a special, special guest for you, Leora Leon. We met um, because we're both part of the wellness universe. And um, Leora has so many things that she does. Um, she's a past life regression, spiritual activist, therapist, shaman, Reiki master. Um, uh, the list goes on, but I'll have Leora introduce herself. Leora? Hi, Gila. Thank you for having me here. So, yeah, I, you know, when I started on my spiritual journey, I just kind of did everything. I wanted to know about everything. I wanted to see everything that I was missing in my life and bring it all to me. So yeah, I've got a lot of education behind me. So we'll put it that way. So blessed to have you here. Thank you. Thank you for being here. Thank you for inviting me. Appreciate it. Of course. Um, so I guess first and foremost, before we get into your background is, um, how do you, what is the feeling that you are having? How, what are you divinely guided to share with us about what's going on right now in terms of like the temperature of how things are going, you know, where we are in 2020, if you can just share some insight with us, that would be great. Okay. Um, well, you know, my whole thing is about love and I keep that vibration of love with me at all time. And so everything that happens for me is, it may be a lesson, but it's also a divine lesson. It's things that we put in front of ourselves to raise our vibration. As humans, we have to grow. And the way that we grow, unfortunately, is through learning lessons. And, and we feel as collectively, I mean, there were people like Gandhi possibly in Buddha that didn't feel they had to go through pain and suffering to grow, but regular old humans, that's what we feel is necessary. So this is a part of growth for us. And I think it's as, as difficult it has been for so many people that have lost their businesses, their jobs and the monetary things, lost people that they love. It collectively, it has become this beautiful energy of renewal renewal from mother earth you know you see articles about animals coming out and they're starting to go back even that there was a hole in the the uh, atmosphere that has been healed in one month from march 2020 to april 2020 so this big it was over the the one of the uh, poles and so it's been a healing thing. I channeled this uh, entity named Yurik, and he said a long time ago that the earth is getting rid of her parasites and we are the parasites. And until we learn to give back in a loving way, the way our forefathers did, you know, our ancestors, to give back in a nurturing, loving way, things like this are gonna happen. You know, even now you see people are not learning. You see masks and gloves everywhere on the floor where people just discard them. Mm -hmm. and, and what kind of like reality is this? You know, we want, we want to give back and we want to give love and give love to everything. You know, our, our families, our friends, our animals, our, and our mother earth who supports us. Mm -hmm. so. Yes, I, I really appreciate that. I think that's so true, you know, I, and, uh, as I'm, as I'm feeling the, the, you know, also we are moving uh, forward, you know, I'm here in Israel and, and um, I have this sense, this, our, I don't know about, I, don't, I can't call it anxiety, but I just have this sense, like, how is everyone going to feel the shift and continue with the shift? Or are they going to go back to their old ways and habits? You know, like, I don't know, I just, I guess I'm of two worlds even though I completely agree with you. I completely agree that, you know, this was a, definitely a healing for all of us, uh, every, every being on this planet. And, um, and it's challenging. It's like, I feel like it's a challenge for us to continue that route when we're back with other energies. Right. You know, here in Los Angeles, people are protesting to go back to the beaches to be free again. And, you know, you are free when you are at one with the divine. And I know that sounds just really like, oh, well, okay, great. I've lost my job. I don't have any money. I don't know. You can be free. 
the idea that they're not free living in the luxury of their home when they're people who don't even have homes. You know, it's, it's a sense of creating your reality and you can create a reality of positive and you can create a reality of negative. And in my belief system, every single thing is a lesson that we put in front of us to grow. So this is a lesson and how you take your lessons lessons can be difficult. I just had my son pass away three months ago and it was, you know, it's been a, a difficult lesson, but what it was is I, it was a huge lesson. I know how grateful I am for his existence and what he taught me. And I, I look at everything. It doesn't make it, it makes it a little bit easier knowing that I put that in front of me so that I could learn and grow. And the result of all of this is that us, the light workers, are here to help uh, help raise the vibration. And so, yeah, there's still going to be the people that don't get it, and there's still going to be the people that live the way that they lived before. But we are evolving and we are changing, and and this has been a beautiful evolution spiritually, I think, for all of us. I, I completely, completely agree. And thank you, thank you for sharing that channeled message with us. So those of you who are not quite sure how to, to you know, move with this new energy, um, I, I believe Leora is saying, you know, to really just cherish our being and cherish our earth, continue the healing um, by really respecting and being considerate of others and being kind. Right. And there's, there's the way that you look at things. And we all have our filters of the energies that we carry with us from our childhood all the way up. And if you believe in past lives from our past lives. So we have to, you know, when we start to awaken, we, we remove those filters little by little. And this has a filter on it too. And if you notice a lot of the, the people that are in the work that you and I are in, we see it differently. We see it differently than someone who is still living with all of those filters that affect our nervous system. So the best thing that you can do right now is to connect, you know, connect to the, the God of your belief, you know, the divine, the, the source, and, and pull down that loving energy and then connect with Mother Earth and bring up that energy. Meditation is a huge medicine. It not only helps you uh, in your nervous system, physically, spiritually, and mentally, it calms your mind, it, it takes out all those worries, and then you bring down that loving energy of, you know, your belief system, who that is, or what that is, and you bring that into you every day. So meditation is key, because that quiets the mind, and that makes us realize what a tiny little speck we are in, in the whole picture of the multiverse and the multiple dimensions and all that other stuff, right? Yes, so. yes, that's so, yeah. that's so true. Um, so let us, uh, tell us a little bit about yourself, Liara. How did you come to this, you know, how did you begin your um, awakening or what is, was there a pivotal event that you'd like to share with us? Um, some well, of the you know, my whole life, I've been an intuitive, you know, even since a little child, and I could read people's cards, and I knew I could, I could foretell the future. And at one point, my mother had me you know, reading all these people's cards and things like that. And then, you know, I had a very extreme life, like very extreme, a lot of things happen that I realized I put in front of me, you know, just like a million things. And then, you know, eventually, I started to discover who I was and what it was all about. And I started to uh, search for teachers that could help me understand who I was and why I was here and why this whole life was the way it was. And um, probably about 15 years ago, I started to become a shaman. And I, I wanted, I, I felt a strong urge to just really find out spiritually who I was I had been dabbling but then I had children and everything and you know you kind of lose yourself when you're a mom and a wife and yourself so I started I, I found um, a teacher and I worked a shaman training for over a year and in the middle of that there there was a time period when um, I always thought that I was going to die at a certain age and right in the middle of the year of my shaman training I developed breast cancer right before my birthday that I thought I would die and 
so had I not been in the training of understanding what we're all about, I probably, it was stage three, so I probably would have just passed. But in my mind, it was a lesson. And what was it a lesson about? It was a lesson about self-care. And so I had a double mastectomy. And still, meanwhile, through all of this, I had a severe autistic son who had severe autism and a bunch of other neurological issues. And so I was just you know, dealing with all this stuff, but this awakening and this learning how to become a healer, it really changed how I looked at everything. My son was my greatest teacher. He was, you know, my greatest challenge, but he taught me everything. He, you know, and all those people that are challenging in your life, those are your greatest teachers. Those are the ones that, you know, and you put them in front of you, you put them in front of you so that you could learn. And so I, I studied shamanism. I became a shaman. Then I went into Reiki. I became a Reiki master. Then I started channeling. I became certified in channeling. I started channeling these high vibrational beings and they would come down and talk and then people would come and listen to what they would say. And so I started downloading all of this information, the Akashic records and how they work. And I mean, just, you know, when you channel with spirit, you get all of this stuff and Early on in my life, in my early 20s, I had a boating accident where I left my body and I woke up underneath the water and, you know, fishes were going by and I didn't know what the heck was going on and plants are wafting in front of me and I realized I'm under the water. And all of a sudden I'd look over to the right and there's my body just like this. And I wasn't panicked. I didn't feel, you know, nervous about it at all but then all of a sudden I get this download of information like boom 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 uh, uh, science you know geography math uh, all kinds of languages that I didn't even understand or knew existed and then all this stuff just downloaded in my head and then it stopped and then I hear this voice and I see this opening and it says, you, your body can no longer sustain being under the water. You have a choice. And so I said, well, what should I do? They said, you can either go here or go back in your body. And I'm like, well, what, what should I do? And they said, that's your decision. So I put my head back in and I went up and that was I've been having those experiences my whole life, almost every night. And this is going to sound crazy, but I have high vibrational beings that come in and they, they surround me and they wake me up. And I'm like, what is this? We're downloading. I'm like, okay, I can put my hand in it and it becomes pixelated. And I mean, just all of this stuff. So there's this whole other awareness. And so what I have found and I have put together is I want people to love themselves because that's the key, loving yourself completely. And I'm not talking about looking in the mirror and loving yourself. I'm talking about changing your thoughts and your mind, your words and your actions, keeping them all in the divine essence. You can create the world that you want. You can create abundance in every single area. You can create your own reality. So that's the whole deal. <laughs> It's a lot. Wow. Wow. Um, just wow. <laughs> no, I love the channeling of the vibrational beings. Uh, I think that's, that's super. It's like, you know, I, what I found and, you know, I, I want to say a couple of things about what you just shared with me. I want to first thank you for, for sharing that. And um, thank you. Um, one of the things that I wanted to share, you know, I've been talking to a lot of people and because we're in this unprecedented awakening, of so many beings like on mass, um, you know, I feel that people are not sure what to do. And, um, and I like what you said, or it resonates with me that you said that you, you went to seek teachers because that's normally what we do, right? That's what we learn to do when we are right. looking for something, we seek a teacher. And, um, you know, and I just want to highlight that sometimes we feel like we can do it on our own. We're intuitive. We have a sense, you know, but this is unknown ground. And I think all of us, I mean, I have coaches now that I've had like for the past three years, ever since I've been on this path. And I've really been on the path since I was born, but I never fully understood what was going on, you know? And I think all of us have these amazing gifts, like some of the ones that you shared. We all have them. We all do. You're right. Every one of us. And this is my call right now. I'm doing these like divine healing words and Instagram. 
And really what the point of that was is that I follow people all the time, you know, different messages, readings, like I follow them like religiously, you know, I, I watch them and I, and it resonates with me. And I, you know, I said, you know what, I can do this too. You know, this is something I need to share. And the reason for that was one to share it, obviously, because I feel like that's it's divine, you know, divine channeling, but also everyone has that ability. And when they can see that they have this power and we're meant to share it because that's what brings others to us to create this, you know, domino effect of light everywhere. Like we said from the very beginning, you know, this was a huge healing for Gaia and for ourselves. And we have a choice. Like you had the choice whether to come up for air or to go down, you know, or to just be quiet. Right but you chose to go up for air. Yeah. Right. You know, we all, we all start in my belief system and what they showed me is that we start up in the divine and then we choose, we're all collective. We are all one. So anybody that says, Ooh, those people are, Ooh, those people, they're not loving themselves because we are all one entity. We we are all one living, breathing, you know, entity. So what they said is we come down, we either come down on missions. There was a big movement of missions in the 60s where a lot of people awoke and then in the 80s and then again in the 2000s. And we all came down or we chose to come down just to experience incarnational life, but we came down. So, you know, to have this incarnational life and incarnational life, every time that you raise your vibration, the pro byproduct of that is love. So you start out somewhere as a caveman and then end up somewhere like Gandhi and somewhere in the middle, you wake up and you're like, oh, and that's the balance. So when we start to raise that vibration, even every day when we love ourselves a little little more where we treat somebody with kindness we're raising that vibration to give that byproduct of love so that we can balance the multiverse you know that's why earth was created along with the many 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 earth like you know planets all over the place so yeah it's all about awakening and finding we all have the divine we are all the same and it's just a matter of awakening you know being awake and when we wake up so that's why you right. and I are here to help people do that. To exactly, exactly. You know, and I've, and I've uh, said many times, uh, not recently, but I've said that, you know, we look up to so many people like Gandhi or Martin Luther King or, you know, um, anyone who you look up to, um, can't think of more, but at the right. moment, but, um, you know, so many amazing writers. And, and uh, I realized, you know, we, we all have this power. We all have this gift. And until we really say, yes, I can, like change our life, just exactly what you said, you know, change the way we think, change anything in our life. We have this ability to manifest immediately now, especially and that's now. our superpower. Yes. You we know, all never, have maybe we didn't realize it. Maybe you don't realize you, you do it, but you've been doing yeah. it since you were born. And, right. and when you can harness that power for yourself and others, because it's collective, then you you not only I was talking about this with someone recently you're not only changing the path of your own life you're changing the you know generations for your children because it's like in our body this healing that we had to go through yeah yeah and, uh, because of that you know it's it's so so important Uh, yeah. Um, so yeah, I, I completely agree. I, I'm really, really glad you shared that. Yeah. I, you know, that's what we want people to know. And it, you know, the whole thing about being one, we're all different. I believe that that is why, you know, the, the divine sent down many different gods, Muhammad, Buddha, Jesus. They're all ascended masters, but they were all sent down with the same message. And if you look really deeply, it's all about love. Yes. It's all about loving each other, right? Yeah, exactly. And, and that's what we have to, we're not different. We are the same. And, you know, I, I was teaching a class and talking about one of the things is that in our past lives, we've all been murderers and rapists and everything because we've gone through that evolution to get where we are and someone's like well i don't believe i was i know i'm a good person i said that's not what it's about you know and even even the horrific figures in our history and that are that exist 
they, you know, we have to send them love. We have to send them the energy of, so that they can go on their, their path of enlightenment, you know, because they have to go through. And even if you look at what Hitler did, which was, you know, the worst atrocity, what it did, it made us more aware of how we should be, you know, and, and I went to Auschwitz and it was one of the most horrific things. I, I think I had a life there. But what that did is it raised the vibration, that consciousness of loving each other equally. And, you know, that's, that's what these things are about. That's like why we're here, what this is about. It's about raising the consciousness of the people about the earth you know, about taking care of, you know, in a hundred years, the industrial revolution, since the industrial revolution, we have found ways in a hundred years to destroy our planet, like to open the ozones to do, and there'll be a lot of people that would dispute that, but it's evident, you know, when we look at the pollution and the things, and what's beautiful now is we're starting to, and my, the generation, like my daughter, 26, you know, buying a bamboo reusable toothbrush that you don't throw away and finding straws that, you know, decompose and stuff. And I'm like, yeah, you know, and then she's trying to take some of the things away that I'm like, well, let's not, you know, I, I'm doing my part. Can I not <laughs> take that away? <laughs> right? <laughs> but that consciousness, you know, I think in the next 20 years, we're going to be a different planet you know I, I want the governments to give us money to you know explore ways in that are environmentally safe energy you know and we have that ability you know you look at tesla who you know years ago came out with ways and now elon musk you know who is giving these patents away for free that's the mentality that i'm you know digging you know i love that and we all have to do that right Yes, yes. So. I, I completely agree. You know, just today, my daughter was telling me we were just traveling in India a few months ago, like a year ago, and we stayed in some like community um, areas. It wasn't all ashrams, but you know, some we all cooked together and stuff. Right. And, and so I told, she said, we, you know, we weren't meant to live in houses. You know, we we're meant to live in places where we could find food and shelter, but, and, you know, and the animals can be free, you know, but we're not quite doing that. You know, we're, we're kind yeah. of still modern. And I agreed with her. I said, yeah, that, that does make sense. And, um, and, and ideally I would like to live in that kind of environment, you know, really be in right. touch with nature. You know, I think all of us, I, I was recently kind of polling in different groups about, are you planting more? Are you, because we had to, you know, we couldn't go to the store. It was very challenging during that time. Right. And, um, and it brings us back into that kind of, you know, so not, it's not self-sufficient, but using the earth to give and give back. Um, yeah. And being cognizant of, like you said, people are throwing the gloves on the, on the ground. Why? You know, we need to be cognizant right. of what we do because it affects us. And, and if you look back to your grandparents, they lived off the land. Okay. You know, like they had their own tomatoes, they did their canning, they had stockpiles of stuff that they, you know, every year they can all their different things and they grew their products. This would never have affected them because they were in the home and they lived off the fat of the land. I mean, out here in California and in the city that I live in, you can't use your front lawn to grow vegetables. It has to be grass. Well, what kind of waste is that? Hmm. Why can't we just live? Oh, I didn't know. know. Yeah. Hmm. So that's that mentality. And hopefully, and you know, we started out as indigenous people that lived that way. We lived in community. You know, the American Indian, they were they were brutally destroyed by, you know, incoming Europeans that founded, you know, America, but they lived, they believed in giving back to mother earth. They would only kill what they could use to eat and use, you know, they, they used everything like a Buffalo. They would use the meat, they would use the fat, they would use the, everything was used. There was nothing left. And the way that they planted and they, they did everything in alliance with what would keep the abundance of the earth coming to them. And that's where we need to start thinking, you know, how can we keep that abundance? And that's by doing everything that we can, the, our love, and, and this is what a high vibrational being told me, what is the best way to share love? And, and is it going around doing for everybody? No, it's raising your vibration, 
so that that vibration filters out. And you know, as a mom and in your family, if you're in a good mood, the whole house is in a good mood. <laughs> you know, if you're <laughs> not, it's like, right? But that's how it is. Raise your right. own vibration. That's the best thing that you can do. Be the best that you can be. Stay in love, the, you know, the, as much as possible. So, yeah. Yeah, you said something very, um, it just reminded me of a moment today. I was going, I'm making sourdough bread now. So oh, I just okay. created my starter and I couldn't find whole wheat flour like they just weren't didn't have it in the store so i went someplace else my son knew was going and it was raining outside and he was like maybe you shouldn't go and i said why did you say that you know when i got home and he's like well if it's raining and you're all wet you won't be in a good mood <laughs> that's exactly what he said today um, the kids know my son my <laughs> autistic son and when i first started meditating i had to like if he interrupt me and i'd have to like ah, you know to get him to understand after a while, he would say, Mom, go lay down, close your eyes. You know, he knew. <laughs> Go meditate, Mom. <laughs> right? <laughs> I love that. Yeah, that's so true. Like, right, you know, my children do the same. And right. I, think, I think they teach us, you know, like you're saying, your daughter, my, also my daughter, she's saying, you know, when are we going to get the bamboo toothbrushes? And, you know, we will. But, um, Right, right. I think the more that we get on this path, you know, and I also try not to waste anything, you know, because we, at one point we didn't have a lot and now, you know, now right. we're, we're more um, abundant, but just because we're more abundant doesn't mean you waste again. You know, that's like going back to the old habit, like we talked about earlier, you know, you need yeah. to still be cognizant of, you know, what is the lesson that I was taught by that challenging time? So I don't have to continue it, you know, yeah. now that we're more conscious of it, you're conscious that you're learning the lesson and you have to be conscious of how to move into that next level of your own journey. Right. And, and that whole idea, my mother, I'm sure grew up through the depression when there were bread lines and there were things and my grandmother did, I know that for sure. And so that mentality, you know, kind of continued but then somewhere along the line, you know, we started to become, you know, money started to become what was important. And not to say that money isn't important. Money is absolutely important to make you feel secure and to give you what you need. And, you know, we never want to look down at money. And that's a lot of times what spiritual people do. They think, oh, money and spiritualism doesn't mix. But it absolutely does because it's a, it's a, a passing of energy. Right. You know, you give something, you receive something, and that's what it, that's what the abundance is about. But yeah, we have to continue to be as grateful and as loving as we can in all aspects of our life. You know, to, and being efficient and not wasting it's super important you know if i have to throw something out that i didn't use i feel bad you know i didn't mean to do that but yeah 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 i completely agree and you know i was even thinking about when you were saying how indigenous people used to live off the land you know my mother it took me you know to india where she grew up and i remember one of the things she showed me was that she lived right next to a rice paddy and that was abundance, you know, because rice is like, is food and they can just, you know, take the rice and use it. And right. I didn't fully understand that at that young age, but now looking back, I'm like, yeah, you know, it's food. It's ab abundance is so many things. Abundance can be love in your house. You know, yeah. abundance can be peace of mind. You know, there's so yeah. many ways to look at abundance. Just being grateful, grateful for everything that we do have. And I, you know, my daughter said the other night, my, my uh, husband and I, and we were sitting there having dinner and watching a movie on TV. And she says, you know, it's interesting. I don't even feel like I'm in, you know, a situation like that we all are. And I said, I want you to look at that and, and look at how grateful you are to not think about the homeless. Think about the people that, you know, and something I wanted to talk to you about, too, is the borders, you know, like here in the United States, the borders, you know, and, and we have this mentality of we're not going to give these people anything and it's all ours. And, you know, and then you look at countries like, you know, Denmark and, and Sweden and Switzerland that they don't have a lot of poverty. They, they have free medicine. And I always want to help, you know, if it means I have a little bit less to help somebody have a little bit more. Yeah, by all means, I want that. 
I want, I don't want people to suffer. I don't want to see, we have a huge homeless issue here and especially in Los Angeles and it, it's devastating. And I think about what, how are they affected? They were affected before all of this happened. Now they're, I can't even imagine, you know, and, and hopefully, yeah, I know now there's more food banks available and there's people doing more work and, you know, I just, I hope we continue to grow in that without having the crisis, we grow in that, you know, direction, so. I, I'm glad you mentioned that, you know, I don't usually talk about that in, in these interviews, but I am really glad you mentioned it because one, I, I actually studied abroad in Denmark. It wasn't oh. something I was planning to do when I was in college. I was planning to go to, um, I was in, anyway, I was an English major and I, and I, went, I went there, but it was because it was a socialized um, state and I wanted to experience that. Um, right. I, I wanted to really understand that and it really did open my eyes and you know I recently immigrated to Israel I'm originally from the States and um, because my husband died and I knew that uh, his family was here and I knew that you know education I knew that it was it was like it had some aspects of socialism which was important to me and um, and I, I agree with you I think that I, I don't know how things were going in the States during this time period exactly, but um, I really feel here and I felt when also when I was in Denmark to some extent that people care, you know, people just care about, you know, or I, I met someone who wasn't working when I was studying abroad a long time ago and, um, and he had a place to stay, you know, and had food to eat, you know, he was still figuring things out. You know, and I was like, whoa, like, that's really cool. You know, like in the States, if I didn't have anything, like I'm in the job. I don't know where I'm in, but I'm in a job and I don't know if I have a place to live. I don't know. You know, we depend on family. You know, you don't ever look to the government because the government you feel is never going to support you. I mean, that's just personally how I felt. <laughs> no, and it's, it's true. And we have such a large homeless population in the United States. You know, we're supposed to be the richest country yet. We don't, we're not supporting. There's no mental health. If you get sick here, you're in trouble. And even people like me, in order to like, say we have, if you get cancer, then your medical insurance pays off, but you still end up going $20,000 in the hole because that's your deductible. So to get sick in the United States, costs a lot of money and all these people that are out most of them and i would say in the prisons too that a good 75 percent have mental health issues and there's nothing there to help them these people on the street do you think if they were mentally uh typical that they would be in the street they try to find every way that they could be you know but there's nothing out there you know, and they're looked down upon and, oh yeah, we want to get rid of them. And you can't, in, in, in LA, the police get mad at you if you go and you give them packages. Like, no, we want them to go away. So if you keep feeding them, they'll come like they're a, a cat. And I'm like, where are they going to go exactly? So now, you know, luckily we have a really good guy who is, you know, our um, governor and we've got a good mayor and they're trying to put programs together, build these, take these old buildings and create, you know, We've got to give, we've got to help. And, you know, there's always going to be somebody lesser and greater. So let's give everything that we can. So we don't have that huge divide that we're all, we're all functioning. Cause it goes back to what we said in the beginning, we're all one living, breathing, you know, organism. So. Yeah. 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 I'm glad you brought, brought up this issue because I think that you know, there isn't really an, you know, an answer maybe at the moment, but I feel that if we really do operate from our hearts and we are compassionate, we are moving into a new era of abundance for all. That's what I truly, truly believe. Um, you know, I, I don't know how political systems work. Like I'm not, uh, you know, I don't have a lot of knowledge in that area, but I truly believe that if we can fully um, walk this path, we are creating a completely new society. Um, that's why we're here. You know, like, I don't know. I mean, I, I've been around for about, you know, 50 odd years and um, I've never seen anything like this. I've never seen a coronavirus, never read about it in history. I've never experienced anything like this. So my only answer is, is that the divine brought this to us to wake us up 
and to change our ways so that this disparity all over the world doesn't really, um, we can change. It is a choice though, just like you had to choose. It's a choice people have to make. And if you choose to change your mindset, you can change your life, including the homeless person, including the person who is mentally ill. You know, we've all gone through these things. And I'm not saying it's an easy ride, but it's still a choice. And the change is so easy. It's just one thing and it's love. And you, everything that you do, you do it in love. Your thoughts, your words, your actions, your physical, your mental, and your body, you know, your spiritual, it's all love. So, well, how do I change? Stay in love. It's that simple. Make sure that everything is driven in love. Everything. So it's easy. It takes work, but it's easy. Right. right? It takes work. And, and so I want to bring that up because, um, because of all the things that you do. So if anyone's resonating with, um, with you, uh, Leora, I want, I want them to connect to you. And I'd like you to just share with us some of the ways that they can connect to you and what your programs are so they're aware of what, what you have to offer. Thank you. Um, well, through Wellness Universe, which is free platform for everybody, you can go into Wellness Universe. Um, I'm teaching a class starting May 23rd called Love Yourself, Change Your Life. It's a sliding scale, so it's affordable for everybody. And it's a 28-day program, so I will meet with uh, the students once a week for two hours and then give them homework. I supply workbooks through email. And it's the, I guarantee that by the end of the 28 days, if you do everything that I ask you to do, that your life will change and you will start to create the reality that you want. Um, I also do a weekly med meditation through um, Wellness Universe every Wednesday and it's uh, 8 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. Um, I do that. And then, you know, I do privately past life regressions. I do life coaching. Um, I do meditations for people. So I'm available. And you can go to leoraleone.com. And uh, that's my website. And then you can connect uh, that way also through Wellness Universe. And you know more about Wellness Universe than I do because you've been there longer. But it's a, it's a wonderful place to be. I love it. It is. It's really wonderful. Um, I, I will put all of that in the notes. So if you didn't, uh, you know, if you didn't write it down, don't worry. You can just have a link in, in the YouTube details. And if there's anything that, you know, um, Leora saying, I would recommend that you connect with her. She has a lot of options right there in the wellness universe. It's very, very easy to use. And I love the meditations and the 28 day program that you're doing. That's just fabulous. So thank you. Thank you for sharing that. And um, any, of it, any of you who are listening today, if you're interested, I have a year-long group program that is truly dedicated to living your soul purpose and to sh speaking your truth. I think one of the things that I found in my own life is to really come forth in all of my crazy ideas and all of my divine, divine creative gifts that once you open that up, you just begin to radiate your light. And, um, and if that is something that you're interested, please um, let me know. I will put the contact information here. But uh, it's just amazing that we got a chance to speak. You know, uh, there are so many things that we wanted to share, but this conversation just went so well. <laughs> we just got away well with it. Well, next time, if you want, I can do a, a past life regression for you guys. Or, you know, if you want to do that, I can do that or a meditation. So choice is yours. All right. Great. Great. Yeah. So just connect with uh, Leora and I'll give you the link to the website. She, you know, she already said it, but we will, uh, we'll put a link there and she will definitely give you um, some possibilities as to what you might need for your path. Is there anything you'd like to say before we close? No, just thank you for, thank you for being who you are. I appreciate it. And thank you for having me and uh, look forward to working with you in the future. And if there's anything you need, let me know and I'll try to accommodate you. And thank you for being you. We need Aww. more you. <laughs> thank you, that is so, so sweet of you. Grateful, grateful that you shared so many beautiful things and um, so many, I think, really um, important thoughts that I think people are really thinking about and they're not quite sure how to 
really um, elucidate them. So you said it so beautifully and you shared um, so many amazing gifts that you have. So I'm really, really happy that we connected and that you took this opportunity to be on this series with me. All right. Thank you. Thank you. All right.